tonight. Are your fillings making you ill? One of the main symptoms for me was extreme tiredness. I began to think, no, oh, this is ridiculously tired, until I found out about the mercury. Here's one of the most toxic substances in the world, and we're putting it in our mouths. Paying thousands to have the mercury banished from your mouth. For me, it was a no-brainer. Having something like mercury in your mouth seemed to me to be a really bad idea. And since I could afford it, I got rid of the stuff. Banned abroad, but mainstream in Britain. The EC says the largest source of mercury exposure for most people in developed countries is inhalation of mercury vapour from dental amalgam. Mm -hmm. But you're saying it can't get into the body? Well, it says exposure to mercury vapour. And mercury vapour, whilst you're having fillings done, obviously there is mercury vapour around. You've got to look at the quantities involved here and the significance of... of no, but you just told me it was zero. <laughs> OK. Most of us have metal fillings in our mouths. Now, they are 50% mercury, a substance that the World Health Organization describes as highly toxic to human health. It may look like a training exercise for chemical warfare, but this isn't a frontline soldier. It's a British dentist about to remove a patient's mercury amalgam fillings. And because mercury vapour is given off, the camera crew and I were advised by the dentist we too should be kitted out in similar fashion. The moment you touch a, um, a filling, uh, a mercury filling with a drill, it increases exponentially the amount of mercury vapour, which is what we're concerned about, um, coming off the filling. So therefore, we use copious amounts of water to keep it as cool as we can. We have an excellent suction system that's sucking all the water and the air from the environment into a special suction that we have, and we drill it out really quickly, so the less drill time on the filling, the better. In the chair is Ruth. She's having her mercury fillings removed and replaced with plastic-based white ones. When I started getting close to 40, I started to feel just that I didn't have the same vitality or energy that I'd always had. And I wondered whether that had any impact, whether the mercury was having any impact on that as well. But, Ruth, you look well, you look healthy. Why are you so convinced that it's the mercury that's making you feel ill? At the end of the day, it's a heavy metal and it's not something that I want to have in my mouth anymore. I think it's been there long enough. I don't know what it's been doing to me and I'd quite like to get rid of it. Even though I'm absolutely petrified of going to the dentist, so it was a big, big decision for me to come and do this. Big, big. We need to be giving patients a choice as to what they get exposed to. We know that mercury is coming off your fillings all the time. Therefore, whilst the filling is in your mouth, it's slowly drip, drip, dripping minute amounts of mercury into the body, which may, in some individuals, cause or precipitate ill health. Therefore, removing them and not putting them back in again would be a win-win situation for the patient. Now, that's not a view shared by the NHS, and most British dentists will tell you the science shows mercury amalgam is perfectly safe. According to the British Dental Association, the amounts of mercury that are in Ruth's body are so tiny they won't do any harm. OK, finished for today. Um, carefully eating until the anaesthetic wears off. Nothing mm. chewy. The fillings are already... Nevertheless, so she's prepared to pay up to £3,000 for the treatment and six Thanks months much. detox. See you again. Now, I'm not going to show you mine because they're decidedly ugly, but mercury fillings have been used for more than 150 years. Two million of them were fitted last year alone. They've been seen as safe and dependable for a long, long time. So why do some people have a problem with mercury? Now, it wouldn't class as a controlled experiment, but we popped a highly sensitive mercury analyzer into the mouths of a few people with amalgam fillings. In line with controlled studies, we found mercury vapor being given off, with measurements ranging from zero to just over 15 micrograms per cubic meter. When you talk about minute quantities, there is no safe level of mercury. So when you eat, for example, when you eat one of these delicious cakes here, when you chew, when you drink a hot drink, like a cup of coffee, if you chew gum, and certainly when you brush your teeth, it dissolves in the saliva. And from the mouth, it has many roots into the body. And most of all, it will be in the brain, the spinal cord, the central nervous system. And that is where it does most of its damage. If it's such a terrible thing, how come so many of us are walking around with mercury fillings and we feel absolutely fine? 
We are all genetically different, so some of us have very efficient detoxification systems and can excrete the mercury from our bodies fairly rapidly, and others have not. This is low-level chronic poisoning, and therefore most people don't get ill straight after they've had the mercury fillings put in. It can take decades for the damage to be done. Low-level chronic poisoning is a highly contentious area of science. Many scientists believe that the majority of people can cope with very small levels of toxins and point to studies that show no evidence of harm. But despite this, the European Commission remains concerned, saying... The largest source of mercury exposure for most people in developed countries is inhalation of mercury vapour from dental amalgam. Two other European countries have recently banned mercury fillings, so I wanted to find out our official line. Do you accept that mercury is a poison and it can have damaging effects on the brain? Elemental mercury is, is, is a hazardous substance and obviously you know, its use is, is, is reduced in, in many areas at the moment. Do you accept that once in our mouths, mercury vapour is released? Uh, there's a very, very tiny amount of, of mercury vapour released when amalgam fillings are placed and then again when they are removed. But actually when they're there, very, you know, virtually no mercury vapour given off once they're actually placed. Right, OK, but I mean, you know, clearly there is mercury vapour being released from our fillings all of the time. And I'm not sure that's true. Mm. Not, not measurably. Well, actually, scientific studies have supported what we found that mercury vapour given off by amalgam fillings is measurable. Uh, hang on a second, because for the average person with mercury amalgam fillings, it's about 10 micrograms a day. I don't know the exact figure, but it's certainly it's a level that's well, well, well below at the level which would actually cause any general harm. But it's the number one source of mercury in the human body now. Um, I'm not sure that's actually true. Well, it, it is true, because this is... I've got a report here from the European Commission, I don't know if you've seen this, but it says the largest source of mercury exposure for most people in developed countries is inhalation of mercury vapour from dental amalgam. So I, I didn't know what, 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 the, what the actual breakdown of source is. It's a very, very tiny part. Uh, uh, it does not reach levels which are clinically significant. But when you're telling me that it's a known neurotoxin, it can damage my brain, why do I want any of that in my body? It's about risk of benefit, and the benefit is that this is a durable filling material that has enabled millions of people over many years to retain their teeth. And the health benefit of that are clearly, clearly illustrated that people can eat a better diet, are better nourished, have a better quality of...